This movie, Sound of Freedom, has been trending over the past few days. Um, some people say it has some kind of secrets that people should watch and I've been urged to see it so many times. I still haven't had the chance to, you know, see the movie. But I've seen clips on TikTok where people go to cinemas and all of a sudden there's something broken in the cinema. And it's not just one cinema, multiple. So it almost feels like there's a reason why they don't want you to see it. That being said, today we're going to be checking out a video by Patrick Bed David, basically Valutainment, and I just want to hear their insights into the whole situation. I'm going to be bringing some excerpts to you guys on what different people are saying about this movie, so make sure to subscribe and, you know, all the fun stuff so you'll be aware when we bring those videos. Without wasting your time, let's, let's get into it. Yeah. Uh, as a new mom... I don't think I can emotionally handle it okay, just because of the subject fair. matter. And I, I, I cry during Pixar trafficking. movies. I'd be a total mess. <laughs> well, have you seen Elemental? I Yes, I did you get it. I didn't even like the movie. I got teary eyed. I'm very, very okay. easy. So so I saw the movie. So here's what happens. We're in, we're in uh, Bahamas uh, and uh, we're trying to find a movie theater to go see this. We can't find it. Finally, finally Tikran finds the movie. And we're like, shit, we're going with 25 of us and the kids want to watch Indiana Jones. What do we do? So Indiana Jones is playing at 1 o'clock. Sound of Freedom is playing at 2, uh, two o'clock. Good news, Indiana Jones is a two and a half hour movie, which is great because we got like a 30 minute. So we go into Indiana Jones, we're watching Indiana Jones, and then me, Matt Sapala, Sheena, Tikram, we sneak out and we go to White Sound of Freedom. We're sitting there. And from the beginning, you're going to feel the pain of the father the taking his kids, a daughter and a son, who is approached by a recruiter saying, Your kids can be models, they can be in movies. He says, tonight, audition is at such and such time. Today, the audition is, tomorrow's audition is such and such time. Father dresses in a suit, takes him to this room, and he takes the kids there. They're excited. Put the kids in the room, and the girl says, come back to pick them up at 7 o'clock. Hmm. He says, what do you mean? Come back to pick them up at 7 o'clock. He leaves, comes back 7 o'clock. No one's there. Shut down. That's how the movie starts. Yeah. By the way, it's disturbing. It's emotional. It's tough. It's painful. At the end, Jim Caviezel gives a message. When the movie ends, three minutes later, he's given a message, profound message that you have to watch. The stats that they gave, that 20-plus uh, million child pornography pictures were uploaded on the Internet the last year, a 5,000% increase in the last five years. The idea where they said every year 2 million kids go into trafficking, going into being sold in a black market, and then stats hmm. about how... You can sell cocaine one time, but you can sell the same child mm. five to ten times a day for the same child. This is crazy. Like, I haven't seen the movie, but just the narration of the movie is crazy. Ten years is what you can do, and it's a $150 billion a year industry. Child and trafficking. Jim is in it, the story of Tim Ballard, what he did. And then while this is going on, everybody, everybody needs to go watch it. I'm take, I want to watch it first. It, it's a decision you need to make. I want to watch it first. I know what it is to be a, you know, I don't know what it is to be a mother, but I have a wife that's had four kids, and I know how tough it is for a mother to see it than a father. Our perspective is more protective. Mm -hmm. Yours is more you gave birth. It's your body. Um, I recommend everybody to go watch this thing here and share it with everyone you know because this is really taking place. This led us to yesterday having a, a conversation with many of the people in Glendale that are going through the challenges they're having with GUSD. We did the Zoom yesterday. We're excited about launching the event in Glendale. The biggest concern right now is every major hotel will announce what these places are and we'll give the names out so people know has said no. Every Armenian hall in Glendale has said come and do the event on what's going on with LAUSD and GUSD with what kind of content they're trying to put in the schools and we will announce the date here very soon. First we're going to announce it underground because we want the right people to show up. Then I'll announce it publicly and everyone's worried about you know rioting, hmm. protesting all this stuff. This is actually a good cause but before he continues I just want to say there's one I just heard of too. I think it was like a few days ago somebody brought it up in, in a conversation. I'm not going to call the nation or the country he or she particularly mentioned in the conversation we had, but she said they are not only trafficking children, but in that nation, they are trafficking children and taking their parts, their body parts and reselling it in the market. I don't know if you get that. Like, not only are they stealing these children, they steal the children, probably kill them and take their fresh and it's crazy what is going on in the world. Other stuff. Here's the point. While this movie comes out and it's doing so well, 
Can you show up how Rolling Stone responded to, I send you those different screenshots when I airdropped it to you, what Rolling Stone said about cuties versus this, what different platforms said about cuties versus this. And by the way, while you're looking for that, maybe show the clip of the video of what the CNN person said yeah. about this, if you know which one I'm talking about, where the CNN uh, is asking a question, so what do you think about this uh, movie? You know, there's a lot of people that are saying that there's some right-wing QAnon, you know. What do you think about this? And this guest, you should see what this guest right there, if we can make that bigger, hmm. you should see what this guest says about You're this movie. you pretty familiar what? with him. Watch this. Go can we with, play this? Of course. Yeah, yeah. Watch okay. this. And you seem pretty familiar with him because he doesn't really hide his association with this real wild plot uh, that that involves, you know, drinking the blood of children and things like that. No, he doesn't hide it at all. And you have a lot of people who are in this world of QAnon who say, oh, they don't know what that is. They've never heard of it. They're just asking questions. With somebody like Jim Caviezel, he is openly embracing it. He's openly using its catchphrases and its concepts. He's speaking at QAnon conventions. And this film is being marketed to either specific QAnon believers or to people who believe all of the same tenets as QAnon, but claim they don't know what it is. And The Sound of Freedom does focus on a real issue of sex trafficking. Uh, but that theme, it, it's sort of like that kernel of truth that feeds the QAnon conspiracy theory. Uh, tell us how those two things work together. <laughs> sure. And the most durable and the most believable conspiracy Watch theories this. are not entirely false. There's something in them that is true and the rest of it is false. But Jerugan the believers point that. to the one true thing and they say, oh, you don't believe that this particular thing is true. In terms of child trafficking, we know trafficking is real. We know it has real victims. No mm -hmm. one is denying that. But these films are created out of moral panics. They're created out of bogus statistics. They're created out of fear. And with something like Sound of Freedom, it specifically is looking at QAnon concepts of these child trafficking rings that are run by the high-level elites and only people like Tim Ballard and only people like Jim Caviezel oh God, and by extension, total. only people like the ticket buyer can help bring these trafficking rings down. So there's a very participatory element. You're not just going to see a movie, you're just killing two hours on a hot day. You are helping bring down these, these pedophile rings and save children. Now, it's not true, but it's a very comforting and it's a very warm yeah. feeling. You know why you have, have to trust this guy, Pat? He has books behind him. Anybody yeah. that yeah. sits with books... <laughs> This guy. Is that not the guy that did I'm transparent? No? <laughs> That's the guy... <laughs> I can't trust you if you can see your transparent or translate. <laughs> but but notice it. If you work out, you're a white ring. You're you're a white supremacist. Whatever. If you're. By the way, this movie was doc. Like they actually have footage of everything that happened uh, to uh, Tim Ballard because it happened. Did you Did see it? the movie? I saw the movie. Oh, you saw it. Wow. I, I saw the movie and uh, I was telling Pat some some crazy moments or where they actually had footage, undercover footage or surveillance footage of. People in third world countries and stuff going up to people like a kid wanders in the street. They grab them in a van and they're gone. It's not a conspiracy theorist. And then it, it begs the question when people are like, why does one side uh, want uh, open borders? And why is it? If you think about it, Pat, there's, there's a fact. 350,000 unaccompanied minors come across the border since 2021 till right now. 85,000 of them have gone missing. And then I, that, that begs the question. Why is one side just like, no, the border's secure. Mayorkas, that little rat. No, the border's open. That is just an inventory of just human beings coming in. And it's like for, for them to say that it's QAnon and it's fake, it's like they're almost, they don't want people messing with their influx of children. It's a huge problem. And yes, they made money off this movie. But now look how many people are talking about sex trafficking and these and these kids and at least somebody now is opening their mouth and by the way this movie was made five years ago i don't know if you guys yeah this movie's old wow now then why is it blowing up now so in regards to what he just said i just thought i should mention they're saying the thing is fake but we recently saw a video i brought it on the channel of this lady accusing the u.s government of being a part of child trafficking like i'm not speculating right now we saw the video is on the channel if i can find it i'll add the link to the description so you can check it out too so if, why would the lady want to do that if it's completely fake? I'm not saying it's true. I'm just saying, why would she want to do that? Wh which movie? 
That Sound, Sound of Freedom. Freedom. Yeah. Not, it, uh, nobody oh, wanted really? to put it out. Go ahead, Lauren. Go ahead. No. Well, it was it was made by Fox before the Disney acquisition. So then Disney they, they essentially didn't release it. They didn't want to release it. They they sold it to this other studio, and the studio actually had to crowdfund to get a theatrical release. So that's mm. kind of what's ironic about the fact that it did beat Indiana Jones at least for one weekend. Is that this could have been money going to Disney, but it's also kind of suspicious. Why didn't Disney want to release this movie? Was it not in line with their their yeah. branding? And by the way, isn't Disney yep. a kids channel? Isn't it like yep. about kids and protecting kids? So why wouldn't you want to protect kids worldwide? Isn't yeah, that kind of weird? Perhaps yeah. they don't really want yeah. to. And, and isn't it shocking, Lauren, that they're, they're talking that? all this stuff about conspiracy? Are you trying to act like Epstein didn't have an island and flew people? Yeah, that we know the... this for a fact it's that a this fact. happened. He was murdered. Don't believe the hype. He was suicided himself. That's all bullshit. Uh, CNN producers getting caught left and right for for pedophilia the, the the numbers are staggering it's in the news it's not reported a lot and just just perverted people pat to catch a predator do you guys know that show yes disgusting we had chris hansen okay, on here guess what that show can be can run every single day for forever because there's an imp there's, there's no shortage of pedophiles the only reason that show stopped hmm. is because one of these idiot demons ran in the house and killed himself and that's what's frustrating about that cnn guy he's acting like moral outrage over this is bad or unwarranted <laughs> he's right. asking as if, oh it's to spread fear yeah you should be Ooh, afraid what is this cutest review netflix controversial child exploitation film is both this looks like a nigerian theme for your children you should be actively trying to prevent this why is moral Bingo. outrage bad when this is something that's objectively evil this is an area to be intolerant in like zero tolerance for this by the way watch yes. this so rolling stone look look how different the the titles are sound of freedom is a superhero movie for dads with brain worms the QAnon thing the thriller about child trafficking is designed to appeal the conscience of a conspiracy Adult boomer. Okay, pretty wild. Now let's go to the next one. Watch this next one here. The Guardian. Cuties review. Netflix's controversial child exploitation film is bold, flawed, and misunderstood. <laughs> misunderstood okay so here's the next one cuties review a coming of age movie caught in the culture wars thanks to a major marketing mistake this award-winning french movie has been accused of sexualizing girls it's actually a sensitive actually, portrait this thing? of growing pains that deserve to be seen are you, are kidding, you me? kidding me go to the next one okay the human traffic film sound of freedom trashed by liberal outlets as QAnon. Uh, adjacent. So when you when you see this, then go to the article about post millennial that talks about if you can pull this up, that talks about uh, Rolling Stone editor in chief spiked reporting on friend getting arrested for child porn. Oh. This was a story from March of twenty uh, first uh, of this year. If you want to go to page twenty four, uh, uh, if you can pull that up, that picture right there. That's the article right there. I'll read it to you. So Rolling Stone editor in chief Noah. Uh, Schachtman removed references to child pornography charges from a story about ABC's producer James Gordon Meek, who was later charged with possessing child pornography. Schachtman, who was friendly with Meek, edited the piece and urged journalist Tatiana Siegel not to include the words child pornography in the story, claiming that the FBI's interest in Meek was unrelated to national security or journalism. Schachtman's decision to edit the story and remove key information about the child pornogra pornography investigation raised concerns within Rolling Stone. Siegel was reportedly not aware of the changes until the article was published and was angered by what she saw as interference. Schachtman justified his edits by stating that Siegel had not adequately verified her sources. When you read this stuff, this is what we ought to be intolerant mm -hmm. towards. Right, and there, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the meme from Oren McIntyre, uh, don't make me tap the sign, and it's just this post that says, it's not that complicated, they just want to diddle kids. And I think we all have a normalcy bias where we would like to think this is just not that common, shadowy, it doesn't really affect our lives, but this is, like you said, it's everywhere, it's very common, it's too common, and there are a lot of policies that we could actively change that would prevent this, things like closing the border, because there is a huge porous, I mean, I remember... Uh, what is it? Melania Trump, she got made fun of when she was talking about the coyotes uh, on that recorded tape mm. and how that was an issue. I mean, the left wing media is like, what is she thinks happening? Blah, blah, blah. Like, you don't have to say anything about it. But the fact that you're even going out of your way to discredit this problem, it's very suspicious. That's all. I'll say. It's very suspicious. They're protecting their, they're protecting their own. Like, that's 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 how the left 
operates for that. And mind you, that guy's name was Miles Klee, the Rolling Stone guy, who locked down his Twitter account like a pussy because he couldn't take the, the flack of like, you mean to tell me girls twerking is a coming of age in the culture, like what the would, hell? Would you qualify that as whole tendency for him <laughs> that's to? That's a bit, would, big time. Whole kind of, okay, <laughs> yeah. Rob, I just sent you something <laughs> on uh, how grooming works. Check this out. If you can play, uh, show this meme here, Rob. I just text you and I put it on your computer. No, that so was the a question very that becomes video. the following, right? We got five more minutes here before we wrap up. I wish we had more time, and we got like so many freaking stories to go through. But I got eleven o'clock, max seven call. So if you can pull this up, does this work? Is this an effective strategy? Well, here we go. Let me just show you this picture here. From a kid in 2015 to 2022, that's the kid on the left, now grown man on the right. Bingo. Grooming mm. works. It's actually a very uh, wow. effective strategy. And they say it wasn't grooming. And yes, you can convert do to your environment. Do. I did a video on um, the, the history of LGBTQ. The dark, exposed, the dark. The dark history. Yes. Yeah. I got a lot of messages about it, Peter Pat. I don't know if you should upload this. If you haven't seen that clip, I suggest you go watch it because it tells you how it got started and, and how it was categorized just in 1973, 50 years ago, and what's been happening with these, this level of growth and conversion of people by generations. You know how they say the older generation doesn't give a shit? They're like, the older generation doesn't give a shit what you think about them. Like, dude, if they're going to smoke weed, guess what? Who the hell are you? I'm 75 years old. I don't give a shit what you think about me. <laughs> Who cares more, the younger generation or the older generation about what other people think? The younger. The younger. The younger one, of course. The older generation about. doesn't give a shit. Do you know traditionalists? What percentage of traditionalists? This is a generation before boomers. You know what percentage of traditionalists are gay? 1.7%. Do you know what percentage of Gen Z is, is like getting? 19.7%. Wow. So the generation that cares Jesus. more about what people think. You haven't seen this? That's cool. Pull this up, Rob. I saw the Bill Maher thing the that generation, he did six ago. The generation that doesn't give a shit about what you and I think, only 1.7% of them are gay. The generation that gives a shit about what everybody thinks, 20% is gay. Oh, it's not because of environment they're born this way. Well, oh, yeah, yeah, you're, you're, you're there, totally right. There are studies 20%? that also yeah. You haven't seen this? I don't know if you, in your video, talk about the twin studies that they've done. So they, uh, they they do studies, or they did some studies on identical twins. So if if sexuality is inherent, you're born with it, it's in your DNA, you would expect that 100% of identical twins would share a sexuality, i.e. both gay. The Ugandan presidents spoke on this research too. You know the Ugandan presidents where they were saying his LGBT bill is too, um, what was the word? I think basically too bad for people and not inclusive and he used this study as one of the reasons to push the bill i don't know if you in your video talk about the twin studies that they've done so they uh, they, they do studies or they did some studies on identical twins so if if sexuality is inherent you're born with it, it's in your dna you would expect that 100 percent of identical twins would share a sexuality i.e both gay both straight wh mm -hmm. what have yeah. you but what they've actually found is that that is not the case there are many many examples of identical twins that have different sexualities indicating that mm -hmm. for at least some people, yeah, there there is a uh, a nurture aspect of it, and what's really interesting is that women, more so than men, were likely to have a different sexual identity than their identical twins. So that means that women's sexuality, or whatever you might call it, is even more fluid than that of men's. And when we see the explosion in LGBT identities, guess what? It's mainly in young teen girls who are saying they're bisexual, they're pansexual, they're gender fluid, or whatever it is. But by the way, this is this is the poll from 2021. The one I quoted was from 2023, but even better. Look at this, Gen Z, 20.8% identify as LGBTQ. Look at traditionalists before 1946, 0.8. The 0 0.8 doesn't give a shit about what we think. Less than 1% of them mm -hmm. are gay, okay? The Gen Z that cares about what everybody thinks about them, one out of five. Well, I think there's a, a recent report that says for Brown University, I want to say, yeah. I don't know if it's that specifically, but 40% of yeah, students identify as LGBT. So if you like this- 40% of the students, uh, Really? That's a real thing. 40%. What is going on in the Western world? You guys should tell me. It's getting scary. Like, I just was hearing things that started from the sound of silence and they spoke about the story, which was already quite intense. And then they moved to this other topic, which is even more intense. I don't even understand. And from, uh, let me just speak on sound of silence for, for a little bit. I think the movie, according to the summary, I haven't seen it, but according to the summary, it's, it's basically about children. But there's been reports. I think Vice News even did this report. I don't know why they're saying this thing is vague or not true. Vice News at some point did a report of human trafficking 
of ladies being trafficked and used as sex slaves in European countries. Basically, they are trafficked from African countries, Nigeria, or a do states, Nigeria, if you know what I'm talking about. And then they are brought to, I think, Italy and Germany, and then they are used as sex slaves there. So this thing is not, it's not like a, um, how do I say it, a new information or something. Anybody can just say, oh, this is false. A Vice City that I would think is a, a left-leaning media, if they could do a documentary like that, I think hours and hours long documentary, if they did something like that, I don't. I wouldn't think the sound of silence is sound of freedom. <laughs> It's far from the truth. But anyways, let me know what you think. And um, I don't I don't know if, if it's the truth, but I'm just saying it's not far from the truth. So just speculating at this point. But let me know what you think. If you want us to dive deeper into this, feel free to let me know in the comment section. I'm going to go see the movie and hopefully I can try to break it down and bring some clips and we can see it together. And I'll try my best to explain and summarize everything that went on. But yeah, smash the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace. I don't hate this bed on my own, bed on my own